So in this video we're looking at alternating current and we want to look at um, how it's generated, um, what the voltage and current curves look like, um, how we express power and um, what some direct current equivalents are, which is this root mean square RMS thing. So we get on with it. Um, you remember in uh, our discussion on motors and generators that uh, we, we have a coil inside of a permanent magnet. This is just one way to do it. The key thing here is that you have to have um, a moving conductor through a magnetic field and however you produce that magnetic field, whether it's an electromagnet or a permanent magnet, does not matter. Um, but you, about an axis, you will cause rotation, so you're driving the rotation and then um, you need to have a uh, with the DC, you remember we had a split ring commutator for the DC motor, which you can run in reverse to generate. Um, we actually want to produce a nice continuous waveform. So this time we want, instead of a split ring commutator, we want a closed permanent um, attachment to the commutator on this side. So, And then on the other side, if we make that a different colour, we also want a closed fixed permanent um, connection there. So this side, um, let's get the outlaw indicator. This side is going to be permanently attached to this ring, um, and the other side is going to be permanently attached um, as well. So we want a load, a resistance load or something, and we want to measure the, let's just move a little bit, we want to measure the voltage across that load. Okay, so the key idea here. Once again, just to state a little bit more clearly, as you as you rotate the motor, um, this this section here is going to be cutting the field going in that direction. That's going to produce a voltage in one direction, and then as it rotates and comes, it's going to cut in the other direction going down. That's going to produce an induced voltage, which drives in the opposite direction to when it was coming up. Okay, and because it's maintaining this contact with the one thing, we're going to have a um, an alternating backwards and forwards voltage produced. So we're getting a little bit into the voltage over time. So we're going to have a nice um, sine curve um, produced of that, which is really good. Now, really, really important to note is the orientation of this coil when you're producing peaks and, and minimum values, zero values and things. So um, let's just have a look at this. Uh, according to Faraday's law, the induced voltage is equal to negative, that's Lenz's law, change in flux over the change in time. So the rate of change of flux, magnetic flux. So when you're getting more or less field lines through that coil, that's when you're going to be getting um, a induced voltage in the coil. Okay, so as it's going upwards, you're going from no field lines going through the loop, because it's the loop is flat, in line with the north to south magnetic field lines. So uh, there's no field lines going through to some field lines. So anything that changes from nothing to something has to be your maximum change. So at that point you're going to have the maximum induced voltage. So if we're considering our, our graph over here, um, this is the position uh, of, our, of our coil compared to there um, to produce that maximum voltage Vmax. Okay, and then um, if we consider uh, the minimum change, um, yeah, the minimum change in flux, which will produce the minimum voltage, which is zero, that's going to have our orientation when it's changing the least, which is uh, at this point here, when it's zero, and it's going to be vertical. That means you've got the maximum flux sitting there, and when it rotates, when it rotates, you get just a very, very slight change in those field lines passing through. So it's it's minimal. Minimum change, which is zero voltage. In fact, that's temporarily um, zero at that point. Whereas, um, th this is quite confusing, so it's worth rewinding and running through again. And going and looking at your earlier um, uh, clips about Faraday's law and Lenz's law. Um, but anyway, we'll, I'll leave it at that, because the video will get too long otherwise. We need to move on. Um, may split it anyway. So you can see here that our voltage is um, producing a sine curve and that's due to the rotation, the nice rotation, circular motion, rotation and if you remember simple harmonic motion that shows this link between circular motion and our sine curves and stuff. So let's, um, let's give an expression for voltage 
um, the voltage at any point in time is going to be the maximum voltage, okay, maximum voltage right there, multiplied by our modifier, which is our sine function. Okay, sine, and if we're dealing with, instead of time, we're dealing with the angle that it's turned through, uh, which you can do as well. Um, expression from for theta, instead of doing it sine theta, the angle turned through, you can use um, theta equals omega t from the equation, and the angular velocity equals change in angle over time. Um, but that omega t we can substitute in there, and it's more useful for us. Okay, so really nice, really simple, easy. V max is modified, sine omega t, depending on the time, um, that'll give you a number between 0 and 1, or negative 1 and negative one, um, positive 1, and that'll multiply it by V max to give you what V is. And uh, very nicely as well, because V is proportional to I, from V equals I times R, um, we're going to have the same thing here for I at any one point in time, it's going to be I max times by the same modifier, sine omega t. Very cool. So that's current and voltage. The next thing to look at is power. And this is where it starts ramping up the difficulty a little bit. Um, difficulty in terms of conceptual. The maths is not difficult, um, but the concepts can be. So if you remember the power formula, P equals I times V. Or if you combine it with Ohm's law, you can get I squared R. Or you can get V squared over R. But we're mostly concerned with this at this point in time. If we were to plot a graph for the power against time, um, we would find it never ever goes negative. And I'll show you why it never ever goes negative. Because at any one point in time, um, you'll be multiplying either a positive, because the current and voltage curves follow each other exactly, they're perfectly in phase, you'll be multiplying a positive by a positive or a negative by a negative when it's on the downside here. So a negative times a negative is a positive always. And a positive times a positive is always. You have to have a positive times a negative to get a negative. And there's no such occurrence when they're in phase. Okay, so uh, what our power curve is going to look like is um, kind of like a, a sine curve that never goes negative. And I'll show you some more of that too. And if you're dealing with the angle against uh, time for the power, or the change in angle, you're actually going to have two peaks. So you'll have one uh, one peak, um, let's see, depending where it starts as your as your zero. Um, in fact let's let's we can we can do this. Um, your voltage times your current at zero is going to be zero volts times zero current, which will be the power at that point has to be zero. So um, that's going to be this point here. Um, if we go back up again, our Maximum um, at uh, this pi by two, with the middle one being pi uh, three pi by two <coughs> and two pi, um, <coughs> or four pi by two. You can see it's going up by half each time. Um, at the maximum, at this point, you've got a maximum times a maximum, which equals a maximum, and that's going to give us this point on our graph below. Then we've got another zero times a zero. At, um, at at that pi point, which is going to be zero. So just we'll put these on here, pi, pi by two, zero. So you can see where we're going with this. Then you've got a minimum negative times a minimum negative, which will be a maximum positive, and that's at uh, pi, three pi by two. And then again, a zero times a zero at the end of the sine curve to give you um, two pi. And that's why you'll have two peaks within one sine cycle, 